<laughs> okay, hi everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure for us to be here today. So we hope you enjoy our talk. <laughs> we are having a fun time in Europe. So. <laughs> okay, uh, let me introduce myself briefly. Uh, my name is Sheila. I am 22 years old. We came from Argentina. <laughs> and I began in information security. I am 12 years old, just studying by myself. And at my 15 years old, I wrote a book on web hacking. And in the last time, I wrote so many papers about NSA exploits like Eternal Blue, Eternal Romance, so whatever. <laughs> you can see those papers in ExploitDB website. Uh, also, I'm a developer in assembly. I like assembly. Uh, C, C++, Python, um, some web technologies. And actually, I work as security researcher, always from an offensive security viewpoint, but because it's fun, <laughs> and just, <laughs> just because I like to break everything, so. <laughs> okay, originally, I have a co-speaker for this talk, but he could not come here because he got into personal troubles, but Shami <laughs> came instead of him. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not Claudio, <laughs> the picture. <laughs> Thank you, Shami, for being by my side. <laughs> okay, uh, he signed his regards to you. Okay, I will talking about car hacking. How many people like car hacking here? Any like car hacking? One, two, three, four. Okay, okay. <laughs> and I will talking about punctually about this so this hardware. Yeah, it's a hardware backdoor, very little and open hardware that we made for canvases. Yep. But before anything, you have to know that play with your car might be dangerous get into the vehicle's network and can inject in and alter the car behavior suddenly, could end so bad. <laughs> you might hurt yourself or other people. <laughs> so we must be careful. It sounds like a disclaimer, and in fact, this is a disclaimer. <laughs> she works so, so, she broke so many cars. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. In fact, yes. <laughs> Okay, and the world of connected cars is more interesting for us. Try to hack in the Bluetooth module and Wi-Fi modules is attractive, and we are familiarized with those technologies. But in our country, connected cars are not the, the mostly kind of car that you can see in the street. Anyway, we want to get a fun time, <laughs> and we try to hack a standalone car. And the way to do that is through the OBD2 port and the CAM protocol. So let me do a quick review about CAM buses. The first component we have to talk about is the OBD2 connector. Yeah? You can find it below the steering wheel, uh, usually in the left side. The OBD2 connector is a diagnostic port that disposes the signal of different vehicle network, such as CALINE and CAM protocol. Yeah. In the terminal 6 and 14, you should find the CAM high and CAM low signals. When we're talking about CAM, we have to talk about CAM bus. That's why CAM network is based on a bus topology. Each node could be a sensor or a vehicle EQ, and the information transmitted on the bus can be used by several nodes at the same time. As CAM was developed for using in automotive environments where there is a lot of noise, it uses a system known as differential voltage that allows it to gain immunity against interference. In this system, the transmitter transmits a signal in duplicate, one with positive value and the other one with negative value. Uh, these are CAM high and CAM low signals. If the receiver receives two signals that are not equal, it is carried, assuming that it's noise on the bus. <coughs> uh, moreover, CAM protocol has something known as inverted logic, where we have a dominant state, which is zero, and a recessive state, which is one. And this influences a bit on the frame's format. In the graph, we can see a standard CAM frame. The green part is the arbitration field, uh, that contains the frames ID, yeah? And those IDs we mostly see those will have higher purity on the bus. 
That's why can frame associated with the engine has the lowest ID, so the higher priority on the can bath. Yeah. And after that, we have the data length in yellow, and the data itself, they can contain a maximum of eight bytes. And as we can observe, there are not source or destination addresses, nor source or destination ports in the current frame, like protocols we know better, such as TCP IP. So a can node has to check the arbitration field to know if it should take the frame's data. <coughs> Uh, that's what a can frame looks like. <coughs> so, we have to know that a can frame does not indicate anywhere what kind of information is carrying. For example, a can frame carrying information about RPM does not indicate anywhere that its information is about RPM. That's why to find out what kind of information each frame is carrying, we have to do a reversing process. And for that, uh, we have several tools. For example, this is an oscilloscope, and it's the lowest level tool we can find to analyze CAN signals. In our case, we have a CAN module that allows us to see the hexadecimal representation of such signals. <coughs> and on the other hand, we have a higher level tools where we can see the CAN frames in a nice way, and we can analyze them more easily. Anyway, it's still so hard. Let me show you a video. That's what the can sniffing looks like. We just turn on the lights, and lots of can frames change their current state. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If, in fact, if we try to read the canvas of a modern vehicle, we can find the matrix. <laughs> yeah, the can frames got mad. <laughs> Lots of scan frames change its current state every time, yep, and it's, it's hard to analyze them. So, the great question is how we can find the can frame we want. So, nowadays there are several tools to analyze can signals. In Amazon, eBay, or in Defcon, we can find some of them. Um, can spy, car loop, can analyzer, or even we can use socket cat, socket can with the uh, open hardware tools. In our case, we began using car loop and can analyzer from microchip. Uh, these tools usually allow us to inject the can frame on the canvas, but the frequency with which this tool makes this transmission may not be fast enough for the canvas. That's when this happen. Each node sends its current status constantly. So in this case, the likes module is sending that the current like status is off while we are injecting every 100 milliseconds that the likes has on. So that's what produces the flicker effect. Yep. So we need more speed for injecting in the canvas. That's why we made this new hardware tool for backdooring and hacking canvases. When we started with the project, we made a simple injector. Uh, we use a PIC 18F2480 microcontroller from Microchip that support CAN. The firmware that we developed for these microcontrollers can inject the CAN frames we want with a great speed. So avoiding that what we saw in the previous video. After that, the malicious ideas come here, <laughs> and we thought how we could control it remotely. That's when we added a SIM 800L module, so how we could control the can injection through SMS commands. Yeah, and that was the first version of the video. Yeah, a simple injector that you have to connect to the OBD2 port, and after that you can inject the CAN frame you want through S and S commands. Then we thought that it would be nice to set up the CAN frames and the attacks command through a graphical interface instead of hard coding the CAN frames in the firmware. So that's when we added a um, USB interface, and we made some changes in the original hardware. In this new design, we have two modes, a programming mode and a hacking mode, being able to toggle between these two modes by a deep switch. 
And as an improvement, we use an SMD component, so the video is not so awful now. <laughs> so this is the final version. And uh, here's next to a rubber ducky to compare the real size. Here is, is pretty light, yeah? And uh, okay, it's pretty in comparison to the, the before, <laughs> the version, <laughs> the first version. So, okay, as I said before, we made a software for interacting with the hardware. Uh, we call this software the Carvador Maker, it's an open source software. And uh, you have to connect the hardware to the USB port, and you can write the backdoor memory super fast. Uh, as we can observe, we can set up until five CAN frames with the respective SMS commands. And as another feature, we added a table number filter, so where you can put the tell number from you will send the SMS commands. So it's just for protection. And actually, we are working on two new features. The first one, we want to take advantage of the SIM 900L module to know the current car GPS coordinates and to launch the car frame injection automatically when the car is proximate to one specific GPS location, the specific one that you define there. <clears throat> and in the other feature, we want to use the hardware backdoor to read in real time the, the CAM messages and launch the CAM frame injection automatically when another specific CAM frame is detected on the bus. For example, you can make an attack uh, when the car is at its maximum speed if you know the correct CAM frame associated with the, a high level speed. Let me show you with more details the car battle maker. Yeah. Okay. So and um, we have to connect the hardware backdoor to the USB port, or here have a USB interface, it's the same. And we have to connect, um, I can see the buttons, so, mm -hmm. the display is not fit, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Okay, so in the bottom there are two, two buttons. <laughs> Uh, connect button and right button, right? In the button below the progress bar. So, and we have to connect, uh, ah, okay. Yes, I can see connect, okay, it's connected. So I will restore uh, an attack template. Mm -hmm. Store. Um. This is a JSON. Nice. Okay. Here we have uh, five different scan frames and their respective SMS commands. If I send this SMS command, this scan frame will be injecting on the bus. Yes, if I send this SMS command, this scan frame will be injected on the bus. Yeah, it's easy to understand. Uh, here we have the adductor number filter. And in the right side, we have the advanced feature. And I have to define what kind of frame I want to inject. For example, mm, the third one, okay, or the one, third, second, or third one. The second one is that, yeah. I want 
that the second car friend I wrote here will be injecting automatically when the card is in the following GPS coordinate. Yeah. So it's, it's just an example. And in the other feature, again, I have to define what, what kind of frame I have to inject, one of them, the second one, or the third one, and I have to define with what kind of frame I, I want to do match. Yeah, when this kind of frame is detected on the canvas, it, the kind of frame injection will be launched automatically. So after I define all, I have to write the background memory. And it's ready. And we can just far enough. Yeah. We have to connect this to the OBD2 port and it's ready to use. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, a good question is. Is there any way to find out the kind frame I need without making a reversing process? The answer is yeah. Uh, we made another project. This is an open kind frame database. Yeah, this is a website, opencandv.online, where you can share your kind frames and looking for other ones. So this is easy to use. I want you to know this, but you can go to opendatabase.com and enjoy. See, the idea is help the car hackers uh, and avoiding to do the reversing process. With this, you don't need to make a reversing process and to waste so many hours to find out the car frame you want. Yeah. So finally, we have the open hardware backdoor tool for backdooring canvas and the car bike door maker for interacting with the hardware and setting up everything super fast. And the open can DB for getting the can frame you want. So we reached the best part. Let me show you the result of putting it all together. The car couldn't make it to Luxembourg, so we have a video. Um. Mm. So, cuesta enfocar esto. Yeah, the screen is heavy. No sé cómo, pero... Play. Oh. No, no se ve. Excuse me. Okay. A ver si. Okay, I send a SMS command to turn on the lights. And after that, I send another SMS command to stop the lights. Yeah. And I have another demo. It's another demo. Uh, 
Presenting at SMS command and the brake lights turn on. And we will send another command. It is multi payload. And the touchometer got mad. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, this is the KitKat, where you can download the um, car battery maker and the hardware schematic. All is open. The open can be is open can be. Um, that's all. Yes. <laughs> For now, this is all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, impressive stuff. Uh, questions? Nobody has any questions. You didn't bring the car with you. Question. Nice presentation, great, congrats. I just wanted to ask you, I'm sorry for this blunt question, but how many cars did you own? How many cars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, three, four, five, and our friends. <laughs> From friends, cars for friends. <laughs> we broke cars from our yeah. friends, and yeah. it cost <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> two, <or> two. <laughs> two cars. Two cars work. <laughs> okay. Any more questions, comments? No, I see. I see. There's various tweets going out saying people are very scared. <laughs> people <laughs> are very worried <laughs> now. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah.